Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra, and I'm broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Uh, those of you who are here with us for the first time, keep in mind that we're going to have to keep everybody muted because of the background noise and uh, devices make funny noises and it disturbs uh, our webinar. So uh, we're going to keep everyone muted for the moment. We're going to do a meditation. After the meditation, I will talk. And uh, you're all, always welcome to either wave at me if your camera is on or write something on the chat box section and then uh, I'll read your question. Um, and then we go from there. Uh, if you want if you want to have a conversation with me again the same thing just communicate with me either through waving at me or on the chat box and then we start talking to each other. Those of you who are viewing this broadcast on Instagram or Facebook I'm sorry I can't answer your questions um, it's too much for me to look at three different devices and trying to communicate you're just gonna have to come and join us on zoom here and you can register through my website zaratustra.tv Academy of Higher Consciousness just jump in there register and join us um, the topic of today is uh, one of our viewers from uh, Netherlands contacted me, wrote to me that she wants me to talk about my five near-death experiences and basically how it's affected me as far as um, my view of life and how uh, its effects um, effects makes me uh, this uh, uh, affects me on my decisions and how do I live my daily life based on that experience so um, did I say it right uh, much did I is this your question exactly and we'll get back to this if not you can correct me later okie dokie so for the moment, let's do a meditation. Just take a deep breath and relax. Before you close your eyes, I want you to just stay connected with me. And just take a deep breath and relax in this moment. Okay? And as we're connected with each other, don't close your eyes yet. Don't, don't go. Just stay. What do you do when you're just... You're at the beach, you're sitting on a nice chair, you got your feet up, maybe you got a cold bottle of Corona beer or a glass of wine or a juice or a glass of water next to you and you're just relaxing and you're looking at the ocean. How does that feel? What do you do? Do you try to relax? when you're just sitting on a nice comfortable chair or armchair by the beach do you force something or you just relax into the moment and you enjoy the scenery you look at the views what do you do normally if you're in that situation you just relax into it you enjoy the beauty if it's a nice sunny day, there's a nice breeze, you just enjoy it without trying to make something happen. Do you have to try if you're at the beach? It's a beautiful place. It's in the Mediterranean or it's in uh, Caribbean, whatever, turquoise water white sand beach, beautiful day, not too hot, not too cold. Do you force yourself to relax or it's just you get relaxed automatically? So what I'm suggesting is the best kind of meditation is a meditation that's not forced. 
You allow it to be. You let it come to you. You don't force it. You don't run after it. And that's what I would like to do. So, imagine yourself sitting in a comfortable chair. You have your feet up. You're sitting on the edge of the water. The water is turquoise. And the sand is all white. And you can hear the gentle waves very, very gently. The water is gently moving. It's very, very calm. So there's these mini, mini, mini waves. Beautiful blue sky. The water is turquoise. It's pristine and clean and good smelly. And you're just relaxing. Facing the ocean. In this moment that you're just sitting comfortably, all of your bills are paid, all of your problems, whatever you've got, everything's gone. Every issue in your life is solved, at least for the moment. You have no issues, you have no problems. You discover yourself you don't have any desires. You discover yourself that you're very happy to simply being here in this moment in front of this beautiful majestic ocean. The colors are stunning. The nature is happy. You're sitting there staring at the ocean. You can't ask for anything more. Everything is perfect. You are at this moment in pure perfection. You can hear the birds, the seagulls singing, flying in the sky. You can feel this very comfortable cool breeze while you're sensing the warmth of the sun on your skin. Your body is very happy vibrating, rejuvenating, creating brand new cells. It's a perfect day. You have no worries, no concerns. Nothing is disturbing you. You take a deep breath as you're looking at the ocean. You feel gratitude, joy. You feel like you're in heaven. You feel that this can continue for eternity. You feel very safe. Nothing can disturb you in your current state. You have a deep sense of conviction that all is well. Everything's perfectly the way it needs to be. Nothing has to be different. You are in complete surrender an admiration of where you're at, the views, the feel, the senses.
suddenly you feel an impulse. You stand up. You kind of feel like you're growing wings. You kind of feel really light. You're standing up on the edge of the water, on the sand. Water is touching your naked feet. You feel lighter more than ever before. You feel free. You feel happy. You feel love. You feel a lot of joy. The joy and your happiness and love begin to intensify. You get stronger moment by moment. Every moment you feel lighter, happier. You begin to feel a deep sense of self-love. You begin to really love and accept yourself beyond anything else that has happened. You begin to feel all of your self-judgments are gone. You no longer criticize yourself but you admire your courage. You admire yourself for going through such a hard journey. And now you have arrived in paradise. All that happened is no longer here. You're very happy, very light. A deep sense of gratitude takes over. You just feel very grateful to everything, to life, for being alive, for being here. You take another deep breath and you begin to walk towards the ocean without any fears and you begin to all of a sudden realize that you feel so light that you can walk on the water never before you have experienced anything like this. Walking on the water. Joyfully towards the deep ocean. You want to run. You can fly. You feel amazing. It's unbelievable that you have walked for so long on the sur surface of the ocean. You have tremendous amount of energy. You cannot believe how energetic you are, how light you feel, and the fact that there is no more a gravity pulling you down, you can walk on the surface of the ocean. You keep walking. You're curious. Fatigue has no, fa is no factor here. 
You can go for hours, days, months, the way you feel, walking into the deep ocean. Now you have walked a long ways. You no longer can see the beach. You walked that far in deep ocean. You look down. And you can, as long as your eyes can see, it's clear. The water's very, very clear. Suddenly you have an urge that you need to dive in and swim deep in the ocean. You do so and you begin to swim deep inside the ocean. And now you don't even need oxygen. Somehow you are, while diving in deep ocean, you're able to breathe. You feel really free. You feel safe. As you go deeper, into the depth of the ocean. You come across what it seems to be the wreckage of an old ship. It's fascinating. It's an ancient ship that's now at the bottom of the sea. Somehow you cannot resist not going towards it and not investigating it. Your breathing is steady. You feel super calm. You are very happy. And you begin to get these rushes of when you were a child. You were eight, nine, ten. 13 years old, curiosity comes, the excitement of discovering something new fills up your entire being, sense of excitement, sense of joy, sense of freedom. Sense of you love your life. walk towards the, the old ship. It's a big, huge ship. And you come to an ancient door. You wonder if this door will open up or not. It's so old, rusted been sitting there for thousands of years. All kinds of vegetations around it. You're not sure if you can open this door or not. <laughs> but somehow magically as you come close to it and you open you grab the knob and you press the door open. The door opens and you walk in. And you enter into this hall of truth. You enter into this magical temple. This ancient temple. Everything surrounding you is filled with flowers and beautiful, colorful paintings. It's bubbly. It's happy. 
it's colorful. If you're walking in, there's a red carpet. You have to walk for quite a ways because this is like an old ancient temple or castle. You can't tell the difference because it's huge, it's ancient, it's majestic, it's hidden, it's dreamlike, it's celestial. As you're walking on the red carpet, and it looks like it leads to a stairway, and the stairway leads to a king. You can't tell it's a king or a queen, but it's sitting on his throne waiting for you or her throne. You can't tell the gender, but you have to walk for quite a ways. You feel safe, you feel happy, you feel guided as you're walking on this red carpet in this ancient hall, ancient castle, ancient temple. There are celestial beings, magical beings, angels, angels of light different beings accompanying you, surrounding you, bowing at you, encouraging you, cheering you up, offering you refreshments, encouraging you to continue on your path, not to stop, not turn around, not to give up, keep going and meet the king. You finally arrive to the stairs. You start walking up the stairs. There's 144 steps that you have to walk up. You feel light, you feel energetic. You are excited walking up these ancient stairs does not bother you but you're curious your curiosity and your excitement makes your heart beat fast and strong your chest are filled with joy feel like at any moment everything can blow up from excitement, from happiness, from joy. What am I going to discover when I meet the king? Who is this king? You keep walking up the stairs. You're passing different beings, angels entities, prophets, knights of the round table, fairies, healers, shamans. Seems like a huge court with all these beings at the feet of the king, greeting you, looking at you, welcoming you, cheering for you. You keep walking up the stairs Slowly, slowly, you're approaching the majestic, almighty king. You can't still see his face. You keep walking. You can't stop. You can't turn around. You have no fear. You're curious. 
You have to discover who is this king. You get closer. And closer. You keep walking. And finally you reach at the last step. There is a lot of light around the king. The light is getting stronger and stronger. You can feel the light. You have a hard time looking at it directly because it's so strong. It's like the sun. You finally get to be in front of the king face to face. The king is having a hoodie. His head and face covered up by this beautiful fabric. But finally you are in a position to face this magical celestial king and you grab the courage you get your eyes used to the light and you stare at the king the king bring his head up and he takes the hoodie off of his face and stares back in your eyes. And now you and the king are face to face with each other. Finally you get to meet each other's eyes and see each other. And to your surprise, you see your own face. You see yourself as the king. It's you who you're looking for. It's you who you're looking at. It's yourself that you discover sitting on a throne in this magical celestial place in the bottom of the ocean hidden in another dimension another time another place who knows and you are now staring into each other's eyes face to face you're both the same height everything is identical You finally meet yourself. There is tremendous joy. There is love. At first you have a thousand questions. But now your mind goes into silence. You can ask any questions or make any comments. Is telepathic communication. Suddenly you know everything. All your questions answered. Everything has become clear. Everything that was to be known is revealed. And er all the other unknowns are being left out, left alone. You don't have this urge or tendency to ask anything. You already know everything. You have discovered your true self. You have merged in with your own divine 
self, your higher self, your 5D self. Everything is clear. Everything is known, yet nothing is set. You have come a long journey. You know your home now. You know your pure, clear, vibrant. And light increases more light. The power of light gets stronger and stronger. And you're standing there looking at yourself, at the king, and recognizing that you and the king are one. The power of light begins to illuminate. All the boundaries of your physical being You begin to lose all kinds of senses of any sort of separation from yourself and everything surrounding you. You are illuminating and dissolving into the light of oneness and losing your individual identity into the identity of the one and in this transition you realize that there was never a you separated from the one it was all a dream and an imagination it was always the one and nothing else and it always is the one and nothing else. It's the one that appears as many and many appearances that come from one source. And that source is you, the true you. As you come to this realization, as you're illuminating and disappearing into the power of light, which is coming from your own self, you gently open your eyes and you discover yourself back sitting on this beautiful armchair facing this incredibly pristine turquoise ocean with white, white sands. You discover yourself back to where you began, yet something has changed forever. You have discovered your true identity. You have discovered inner peace, love. Your mind is quiet and your being is still. You have discovered the truth of who you are. You and the king are one. Slowly, slowly come back. That 
that's what happens when you are touched by the power of self. Amir, can you hear me? Is my mic working? Yes, no. Shadi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. It's not too loud, too low? No, it's good. Okay, thanks. Perfect. Marchi, you had a question. Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, nice. Uh, yeah, you uh, spoke earlier many times about your 5D, your 5 uh, uh, near death experience, please. Um, and I think you've, you've learned. Or, or what did you did you take from it? What is your biggest yeah point? Your view of life? What did it change? How did it change your life? Yes, great. It's a wonderful question. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate it. So I was going to talk about something else, but since today is the only your day off, and you can participate in the academy uh, you let me know I appreciate it so I'm going to talk about this this topic thank you very much yeah yeah so and uh, actually when I counted how many times I was close to really go to the other side I discovered it six times so I think I got one more left if it's seven then I'm at the end of the line if it's nine then I got three more left what do they say cat has seven lives or cats have so many yeah okay so each each near-death experience was profound had its own uh, qualities and what happens is when you are so close and to the death and the death is very close the death wants to kiss you in, on your lips and it gets that close and to take you Overall, it made me realize a number of different things. One of the main things it made me realize is that my bags are packed. So, let's say I have a backpack and, and my backpack is packed and I am ready to go. I'm ready at any moment that the maker calls me back that I, I have to be ready to go also I realized that this is a one-way contract that we have with our maker and this one-way contract it's non-negotiable it's non-renewable. It's subject to termination at any moment without any prior notice. That's the contract you have with the maker. You can negotiate 
the day you have to leave this planet, the day you have to leave your body, it's not for negotiation. It's non-renewable. You can't renew this contract. When the contract comes to the end, this is it. There's no ifs or buts that, oh, give me a little bit more time, God. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I didn't take this journey. I didn't take this trip. I didn't say nice things to my family or my friends. Or I didn't do everything I wanted to do. When the contract has ended, it's ended. You are leaving your body and you're going to the other side. There's no ifs or buts. That's how it is. You don't have anything to say. And there's no notices. It's you can terminate at any moment. There's no prior notice. It's not like you're late on your payment on your car or your apartment rent or house mortgage and they give you notices that you can you have a month or three months to pay this bill or you will lose your house or your car. There's no notices. It's sudden. Suddenly, the plug is pulled and you have to go. There's no ifs or buts. That's how it is. This dear life that we're hanging on to it so dearly, some of us have major fears of death. I would say majority of population on this planet, they are very afraid to die. And they're afraid, we're all afraid of something we don't know what that is. You don't know what's on the other side. But we're afraid of the unknown and we'll do whatever we have to do to hang on and try to squeeze a little bit more life out of this. So we hang in there longer. What I realized is the day of my death is already set. And it doesn't matter what I do. I can live a dangerous life. I can try to play it safe. I can just stay home every day and not go anywhere and not have any contact with anyone, any po anyone outside. So I'm afraid of coronavirus. Or I can be reckless and go out there and just be out there among people. It won't make any difference. The moment I'm supposed to go is already set. You cannot change it. You can't negotiate it. You can't postpone it. There's nothing you can do about it. It's already written. It's already set. There's nothing in this world anybody can do to change it to delay it, to extend it. It's already written from the day you were born. That's written. The day you're going to go, it's written. I discovered that through these near-death experiences. I believe at least four times out of the six or three times out of the six or five, whatever, I should have been dead. There's absolutely no logic, no logical explanation that I should have stayed alive. 
all evidence and everything that I examined was pointing out that you should have been dead. But somehow, through the grace, something, some force, didn't want me to die. It kept me alive. When you come close all these times to dying and something keeps you alive, something snaps inside you, something breaks inside you, something changes inside you. Because the number one thing is you lose your fear of death. This major fear that is haunting a lot of you. You know, there's one thing to say sitting in a spiritual situation and saying, oh, I'm not afraid of death. But there's another different story if you seriously are about to die. There's two different stories. When you're facing it and you're that close to it, then it's a different story. And when you get close to it so many times and you're spared, you realize you feel the presence of something much bigger than you. You can no longer allow yourself to keep saying, look at me, look at me, I am great, I'm powerful, I'm almighty, I'm the author of my own life, look how strong I am, I do whatever I want, it's my will to do this, it's my will to do that, that leaves. You can't say it anymore because you become humble. And I appreciate it, even though there were very difficult situations, and definitely a couple of them were very clear that this is the end, and there is no turning back. And I saw in a few of them all of my life pass in front of me. I saw everything. Everything passed in front of me. Like a film, fast forward film. Woo, you, 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 you. And I, one of them saw, even saw my funeral, that my mother was weeping over my grave. She was beating herself up. She was crying out that, that I had died. I even saw that. So what happens is, <laughs> yeah, I pay attention to what I eat. I pay attention to my habits. But I'm not religious about anything. If I feel like I want to have a cigarette right now after the academy, I'll go buy a pack of cigarettes and have a cigarette. I don't give a shit what anybody thinks, or I'm spiritual, or non-spiritual, or it's bad for my health, or whatever. If I want to do it, I do it. Without any explanations to anyone, or anything. If I really want to do something, and it's within my reach, I do it. Because I'm no longer under the illusion or I'm no longer being ignorant. Let's put it this way. I don't carry this ignorance and being in this illusion that this body is going to be around forever or whatever, 
whatever I do or I don't do, it's going to expand the life of this body. I'm not under that illusion any longer. Now, do I, f you know, like I'm in California, Southern California, and everybody's so worried about eating organic food. It's non-GMO. It's not radiated. There's no toxic waste to it. And the whole idea of a lot of people I know on spiritual path, they're so concerned about the food they eat. And it's okay. And it's great that there's this awareness is taking over the planet of eating healthy, um, eating organic food, paying attention. And that's fantastic. But now I can see it's turning to a fanatism and I can see the, some people are so hung up on it and as if their life, their lives is depending on being vegan or eating organic or not having, oh, I can't touch alcohol or, oh, cigarettes or, oh, da, 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 or, you know, it's just like a cult in a way. And you have to be a part of that or something's wrong with you. And thank God to these near-death experiences because I'm free from that too. I don't care. I eat anything I want. I don't eat junk food. I basically have good eating habits in comparison. But I don't really care. I don't pay much attention to any of these things because I've gone beyond that. It was maybe important at one point, but it doesn't do anything for me because it's not going to make me live longer or shorter. What it does is affects the quality of my life. If I eat junk food or the wrong kind of food, yes, it creates indigestion. And that makes me uncomfortable. And I don't want that. But none of it is for me to live longer or live shorter. And none of it is going to affect, make me change the quality of my life to be in fear. Because that's another trap of going into fear and anxiety. Or anything, any moment something's wrong with me, I run to doc a doctor for them to check my heart or my blood pressure or cholesterol or whatever. I don't operate from fear of death any longer. That doesn't mean I'm reckless. It doesn't mean that. It means that fear of death no longer has any power over me. And that's tremendous amount of freedom. Tremendous amount of freedom. When you don't have that fear any longer ruling your life, ruling your decisions, because you start to become free and live freely beyond your imagination. Because that's one fear is hunting everybody their entire life. And that's huge because it affects your decisions. Also becoming humble, realizing that Everything and all of your story, your life story, can end at any moment. I consider myself a kid. When I'm in a car that's rolling down the hill seven times, I hear explosion all over, everything is breaking and popping out 
and falling apart. The driver of this taxi we were in was shot out of the front window. He was shot out as the car is rolling down the hill. He was gone. I was with a friend. He jumped and hugged me. Now it's two bodies attached to each other. And the car is rolling down. And I'm no at this point, as young as I am at that point, that my life is over. Mommy, daddy, friends, your money, your fame, your lawyer, your doctor, nobody is going to be able to help you. It's over. It's finished. Your story is finished. You're in a car accident rolling down a hill and at any moment a piece of metal will go and cut through your neck or your gut and will break you through, cut you through and your life is finished. You are no longer going to be around. When you have this happen to you more than two, three times, something shifts inside you. You can't be this person who was living in an illusion in this la la land. You realize there is a higher power much bigger than you and you become humble really humble that something is controlling everything and it forces you to question things you cannot go through these near-death experiences and not question things not seek things, not look for this higher power. It's impossible. Something much bigger than you has saved your life, has granted you to live longer. You have to find out what this is. You can't like be a kid, a child. It forces you to grow up. It forces you to drop this little me. Oh, me, but I feel really hurt. And I da 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 da. And you didn't talk to me the other day. And you didn't pay any attention to me. And da 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 da. da and all these childish, stupid things that your mind is playing with you. That you play these games with yourself and other people. All these little stuff, they disappear. You no longer concern yourself by these petty things because your inner child is hurt or because someone didn't pay attention to you or they didn't look at you or they talk to your friend and they didn't talk to you. You drop all this stuff. It doesn't matter. You don't care. The pity stuff. You can't really feel sorry for yourself either. It forces you to go beyond these things. It forces you to look deep wanting to know the maker because you realized that at any moment at any moment this is not words it's a realization that you realize at any moment your story can end That's how, for me, is every day is the only day I have. I don't have another day.
And when people ask me, are you going to come back to Scandinavia or are you going to do this or that? Are you coming back to Sedona? Are we going to have another retreat? I always say, inshallah. God willing, if it's meant to be, if I'm meant to still be alive for the next day, that's the intention. But there is absolutely zero guarantee. You all have a switch, light switch at your house. You know, what do you do? You walk into your house, you walk into your living room, you enter into the house, and what do you do? You flip this, the light switch on, and the lights go on, and you can see what's going on inside your house. You turn the light on. And the way I see it is, that's how it is, with our lives. When God turn off the switch, you're gone. When they turn off your switch, it's finished. All your jumping jacks and manipulations and going seeing your doctor regularly, taking your pills on time, you know, being afraid to go out there because of corona, being afraid to see people you love because you may get the disease from them or whatever. None of these things, all of your precaution, precautionary action, all of the stuff you're trying to do is just a mental ejaculation. It's mental masturbation. That's all it is, if you're asking me for my direct experience, I'm telling you, none of these things is going to make any difference. When you're meant to go, you're going to go. And if you're meant to stay, you're going to stay. So asking me, how does that affect my life? Yes. Having gratitude. Being grateful that I get to be here one more day. And that's all it is for me. One day today. Doesn't matter what happened yesterday. And I don't care what's going to happen tomorrow. It won't make any difference for me. Today is the only day I have. What do I want to do with today? On my only day I have. I want to live this day fully. And I want to be present with whatever I have to do. Yeah. So, do I just drop my work and go to the beach today and not take care of my responsibilities? No. I have things to do. I need to take care of my work. I have stuff to do. I have people to see. I got places to go to. But I will do all the stuff I need to do, but I'm present with it. I'm not going to go take care of something I have to do and worry about next week, worry about next month, worry about my retirement, worry about the world. I am around people, I'm surrounded by people that they're always worried about things, worried about what's going to happen to the world, what's going to happen to the country, what's going to happen to the family. What is it going to be like, Zarathustra, when you retire? You have no retirement plans, Zarathustra, my mother says. You don't have any kids. Who's going to take care of you? What's going to happen to you when you get, you get old? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen to me. That same thing that has brought me here is going to take care of me. 
Why do I have to worry about what happens to me when I get old? I don't think about such things. My mind doesn't go there. I can't even really think about more than a month or two months from now on. I have some plans for next month. But I don't know if it's going to happen or not. I don't know if I'll be alive next month or not. Of course I would like to be around. I like it here. But I'm also okay to go. Because I don't know the next place is going to be better or worse. It's unknown. But I trust. I trust the boss. I trust the creator. My employer that I work for, Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, will take care of me no matter what. In the meantime, I'm going to live today. I'm going to live it. And I'm going to be free. Because I want to die free. I don't want to die like most people on this planet in fear and worry and anxiety. No, 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 no. I'm going to die free. And I want to be conscious when I die. I want to be fully aware of this transition. I know. Hoping I don't die in a sleep. I want to be fully aware of the transition. I want to watch, observe the transition. As we're doing self-observation today, as we're watching the mind, watching the emotions, and our practice is to be, to be watchful, to observe, I want to watch the moment I'm dying from... This transition, I want to do it meditatively. Completely present with this transition. Not from fear and, Oh my God, I'm going to die. No. And I've told my friends that the day I die on my funeral, I want a great party. I want people to come and drink, smoke, have fun, dance, don't cry over my death. I want you to celebrate my death. Celebration. Not crying. No one's allowed to cry. If anybody wants to cry, they have to leave. They have to come and dance. I want a party. Not mourning. This is what I learned. And other things too, but I can't think about it. Is there anything else you want to ask me, my friend? Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, special. You had five or six near-death experiences. Uh, why did it happen to you, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to wake up? <laughs> Obviously, I had to wake up. Obviously. Was it, it hard was a, to wake up? To get you woken up? <laughs> I, I guess, because I, you know, I guess, you know? Yeah, I, I guess I was a tough nut to crack. So they had to kick my butt so many times and rub my face on the ground to become humble because 
obviously I was ignorant and I had an attitude. So whatever had to happen, happened to make me realize how fragile is life, how close you are to death at any moment, that it can end at any moment. At any moment. So you can't take it for granted. Because you have no idea when it's going to end. So that means do whatever you need to do. Now. Go for it. Whatever that is. Go for it. Don't let fear to hold you back. So if you're 75 years old. And you want to learn a new language. Do it. Go for it. What do you have to lose? If you're 80 years old, 75 years old, whatever years old you are, and you want to go to another country, you want to go see something, you want to experience something, do it when you can. Because you never know that there's going to be a second chance. There's going to be another moment. If you want to love somebody and tell them you love them, do it now. If you want to spend time with someone, don't postpone it to another day or time. And none of it also made me realize that all these physical things in the world, money, possessions, home, gold, this, that, cars, boats, people, people, men, women, not for me to have any attachments to any of it because all of it is going to disappear at any moment so it made me become free so i'm very grateful i'm not bitter to i'm grateful that in these events and accidents and things happen i didn't lose an arm i didn't lose an eye and nothing happened and I'm still in one piece. I'm very grateful for it, for everything I learned. As difficult and as hard as it was, I'm very grateful for it. And I don't find myself a victim. I find myself a victor. Okay. Beautiful. Yes, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for bringing yeah. it up. I appreciate it. And there may be things that I forgot to say, and it may come up for me later. I don't know, but that was a great topic. Uh, uh, there's been a couple other topics that's been brought up to me that I'm very grateful for you all writing to me and suggesting, to suggesting topics. I do want to talk about these other things at the next few academies. Uh, I also have an announcement to make is that I have decided to offer another um, free online global self-awakening retreat and it's going to be a nine days, nine day retreat. So we're going to, I'm going to be offering that in October. I'm setting up the date. Right now, I believe we're going to start on October 10th. But I want to make sure that we get all our ducks in a row. If we don't start on October 10th, we're going to start on October 17th. For nine days straight, every day for two hours. We're going to be doing this. So that's my new project. I'm very, very, very excited about it because I want to offer as something deeper and strong and consistent to the community to our online community and give those who can't come to my life training program they can't afford the life training program i want to be able to offer this to to those of those of you who are interested in the teachings and can afford it so because we do have paid events and, and non-paid events. But I want to include everybody. So this teaching can be.
these spread. And uh, once we put our ducks in a row, I'm going to ask you all, anybody who want to help spreading the word regarding the upcoming retreat, uh, if you want to share our posters online on Facebook or Instagram, or if you want to invite some of your friends to join in and benefit from these teachings. So, so I'm going to put it out and ask you all to help me out. This was a beautiful, powerful meditation that we had. It definitely took me far, far deep within. And I had a hard time speaking afterwards. But I knew our friend took a day off to join us on the academy. And I didn't want to disappoint her. Otherwise, I probably would have been still silent sitting here with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a short audio video of this meditation and send it to all of you as a gift. Our next academy is going to be on, uh, on next Wednesday. Uh, we're going to continue. I'm committed to do the academies every Wednesday. So we're good on that and as I have mentioned before I offer a private mentorship it's a VIP program tailor-made for your needs it's called life training program it's a three-month program that I would be working with you on one-on-one -on -one basis and if you have any interest and you want to achieve your spiritual goals and you can dedicate yourself to it and commit to it then contact me and we set up a, a free consultation appointment and we talk about your goals and how this works and the terms and price and everything and see if it's something that it's working for you or if you fit into this program. Thank you very much for joining me. Sending you my love. Wherever in the world you are, stay in your heart. Stay in this place. Get out of the mind by meditation. Dive into your heart and remember your beauty. Remember the love you have. Remember your power. And when I say power, I'm not talking about a personal power for manipulation or accusation of objects. I am speaking about the power of love that exists within you. Your power. Your presence. That when you are not thinking and you're quiet, our Supreme Soul, Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, Lord God, begins to shine from inside you. These are not just words, my brothers and sisters. Please pay attention. Pay attention to who you are because the power of love the power of God only comes from within yourself and because your hearts are pure and your heart is open when we connect together we all enter into the unified field of oneness the unified field of love. And the transmission of love becomes possible because all of our hearts, all of our minds connect into the one, oneness. And this love 
transmit so remind yourself every day that you are the source of this love you don't project it on other people don't project it on other things Don't put it on a teacher or a person. Catch yourself when you're doing that. This other person on the other side as a teacher is only the reflection. It's the mirror. is mirroring back to you. That's the true teaching. that you are who you're looking for it's coming from you so turn your attention in words and recognize who you are beyond your mind your mind is going to play all these games tells you you're not good enough you're not worthy you have earthy desires fears somebody else is better than you don't listen to these things what your mind tells you stay with this and feel this if you feel this know that it's coming from you not someone else And let this grow, let this love, this power keep growing within you. Its fire will consume your mind. Soon your mind will go into silence. Soon you will really recognize who you are. You wake up from this dream. This dream, this world is nothing in comparison to the truth of who you are don't hang on to it so much it's nice it's got a lot of nice things in it just enjoy its nice things but don't hang on to it don't get caught up into trying to fix it trying to protect it Don't put your attention on it. Just bring your attention in words. Be quiet. Be still. Don't give in to your these worldly emotional ups and downs of what's happening in the world. Just keep your attention on yourself, on stillness. And build up this, keep building up this power, keep building up this energy, this love around you. Without any intentions of using it for anything, be careful, that's the ego will come and will tell you, you're powerful, you're mighty, you can do this, you can do that. Don't even listen to that. You build this up. And you don't need to do anything. You stay in love. And everything you need will come to you. Everything you need will come to you. Build up the love in your heart. Work on that. Everything else will come together. Thank you. Namaste.